Do you swing from taking all the vitamins for your lupus to then taking none because you don't know what to take and you don't even know if they're helping? There's so much information out there from don't bother to take this to cure your lupus that I can understand why it's confusing. You don't need to spend all your cash on supplements and vitamins. I'm gonna tell you the two most important vitamins when you have lupus, why you should incorporate them into your routine and how to go about finding a good one. So stick around. Okay, so there is so much information out there, it's super easy to get overwhelmed. Having lupus or really any autoimmune condition is so life-changing just by itself that delving into the world of vitamins and supplements can feel like Alice falling down the rabbit hole. Bye, Dinah. Goodbye. It's not always easy to get straight answers from your doc either. So are there vitamins that can help? Yes, but first, some context. Vitamins and supplements are not regulated with the same rigor, or really at all, like prescription medications. This means there is no oversight into making sure one, the benefits that are claimed are actually true, and two, that what's labeled on the bottle is actually in the pill, or three, that its safety has been verified. The vitamin and supplement marketplace has been, and continues to be, the Wild West. So it's imperative that you pay attention. Okay, so if you have lupus and aren't taking vitamin D, seriously, what are you doing? Vitamin D is a hormone that is involved in bone and immune system health and has been repeatedly found to be low in those people with lupus. I did a whole video on vitamin D that I'll link in the description box if you want to do a deep dive. Vitamin D has been found to promote an anti-inflammatory state and in lupus can go up and down with lupus flares. In my own practice, I can attest that when someone's vitamin D is normal, I am much more confident that they are in or near remission. So where do we get vitamin D? We can get it from oily fish or dairy or other fortified foods, but the bulk of our vitamin D is made in our skin after exposure to UV light. Obviously, if you have lupus, your first thought may be, well, of course I have low vitamin D. I avoid the sun like the plague. The sun! And it's been theorized that that may in fact be the reason lupus patients have low vitamin D, but it's likely more complicated than that. How and why vitamin D is low in those with lupus is still unclear, but it has been standard now for a decade or more to one, check vitamin D levels, and two, provide supplementation when the level is low. But this is where things get fuzzy. What level of vitamin D should you have and how much vitamin D should you take? The first thing to recognize is that the lab is going to report your vitamin D level as normal if it's above 32. This parameter was set based on the minimum vitamin D necessary to get good calcium absorption for bone health. It wasn't set for optimum immune system function. But what is the optimum level for immune system health? We don't know. Vitamin D metabolism is affected by a lot of different things, including genetics. So the optimum level is likely different for different people and likely even varies based on an individual's health. In practice, I will typically recommend a goal vitamin D level of 50 to 60s, but please note, this isn't based on hard data. So how much should you take? Again, it's a little fuzzy. Vitamin D comes in two forms, vitamin D2 or ergocalciferol and D3, cholecalciferol. D2 can be taken in very high doses, like 50,000 units once a week, and it's usually used with someone who has very low vitamin D, so think a level less than 20. D3 comes in a lot more doses and is typically given in 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, or 10,000 units daily. You can see how there are a lot of choices here, and which is best for you will be dependent on what your level is and what other types of vitamin D you've taken in the past. For example, if I'm seeing someone for a second opinion and they have been on high dose vitamin D2 for six months and their level is still low, I'll usually switch them to a lower but daily dose of D3, theorizing that they're having some poor absorption of the high dose D2. These changes should definitely be made with the help of your blood test results. Although it can seem like a shot in the dark when making vitamin D recommendations, and you wouldn't be entirely wrong, 
The good news is that it's very hard to become toxic on vitamin D. Toxic levels are considered higher than 110 or 120, and for lupus patients especially, it's very hard to get that high. So why should you take it? Well, vitamin D is integral to the entire lupus treatment strategy. Getting your vitamin D level in the normal range will set your body up to maintain remission and possibly allow you to be on a fewer medications down the road. The other essential vitamin for those with lupus is omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 is considered an essential fatty acid because our body can't make it by itself, so we need to get it from our food. It is one of many different types of polyunsaturated fatty acids. We also need omega-6. However, omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. And although we do need some of it, the amount most of us get with our westernized diet is just way too much. And unfortunately, we are mostly under eating omega-3. This imbalance can contribute to a number of different health conditions, but it also promotes a pro-inflammatory state, which is exactly what we don't want when we have lupus. In lupus specifically, taking omega-3 has been associated with a decreased inflammatory load, and it defends against the high cardiovascular risk carried by those who have lupus. The two types of omega-3 we most care about are EPA and DHA. And taking doses from one to three grams a day of those two omega-3s has been shown to have an anti-inflammatory effect. As opposed to vitamin D, omega-3 is found in many foods. And it's always recommended to get your omega-3 from food first. Krill oil, fish oil, olive oil, flaxseed oil, and fish such as salmon, tuna, sardines, and herring are all great sources of omega-3. However, those foods aren't your jam, then finding a high quality supplement is good too. So, speaking of finding a high quality supplement, how in the heck are you supposed to do that? Well, there are a few sources I like to check with before buying any supplement. These are independent groups that test supplements mainly to ensure that what's on the bottle is what is in the pill. When it comes to vitamin D and omega-3, thankfully, the risk for harm or having some sort of side effect is low. Like I said, the risk of becoming toxic on vitamin D is very low, and if you get checked every three, six, or 12 months, you'll likely be able to avoid this. The biggest risk of omega-3 is having bad taste in your mouth or like fishy burps. If you take very high doses, however, it can lead to bleeding. So make sure you're taking the recommended dose and make sure you tell your doctors that you're taking it as a supplement. The biggest risk then becomes to your pocketbook. Supplements can get real expensive real fast. The U.S. Pharmacopeia has a dietary supplement verified directory. This is an independent, scientific, nonprofit that tests and verifies supplements. If you go through their website, you'll see many of the brands you can easily find are verified. Other sources are labdoor.com and consumerlab.com. But Dr. Ortiz, what about B vitamins, curcumin, probiotics, magnesium, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. I know there are a lot of other supplements out there with both claims and some interesting data supporting their anti-inflammatory properties. But what I'm looking for when I make a recommendation is what is rooted in biology and what's been shown to make a difference in a person's life. I've seen patients get benefits from a lot of other supplements, including B vitamins, curcumin, probiotics, and magnesium. But has it been so universal and proven that now I feel comfortable recommending them to everyone? Well, no. And as I alluded to before, because the data on supplements isn't super strong, we need to consider the financial and lifestyle burden of taking multiple supplements. I've seen people spend hundreds of dollars a month on a fistful of daily supplements without much benefit. They still have to come to see me and they still have active inflammation. Starting with vitamin D and omega-3 and then taking a look at your diet is my recommended approach. You can't out supplement your way out of a diet full of fast food that's loaded with sugar. All right, so here are some questions for you to think about and bring up with your doctor. Have you had your vitamin D checked recently? 
What was the level and how does it compare to previous results? Remember, we want our levels closer to 50 or 60. So even if the lab did not flag it as abnormal, talk with your doctor about what you can do to get it closer to that goal. Are you eating fish like salmon, tuna, sardines, or herring at least three times a week? If not, talk with your doctor about adding omega-3 supplement to your routine. Instead of continuing down the supplement rabbit hole, are there ways you can add more green leafy vegetables to your diet? Can you swap out one meal you would typically eat red meat for fish? I hope this has helped give you some clarity on what you should focus on. Vitamin D and omega-3 are a no-brainer, positive addition to your lupus lifestyle. The supplement marketplace is just that, a marketplace. Not to say there aren't gems that can really help you, but just recognize it for what it is. Many of these websites and influencers are trying to sell you something. Making even small changes to your diet is really the way you can make long lasting healthy changes as you learn how to navigate your lupus. Thanks and we'll see you next time.